The race to become the champion of tech devices, be it phones or laptops, is really tough. And with other established competitors, it is really difficult to even enter that race. Asus is in the midst of it all and has gone ahead and dealt a heavy blow to each one of them with having an upper hand on the creative part of tech. The time between 2015 and now from the time when Asus had announced smartphone production in India to today's date where Asus has ensured its presence everywhere, ranging from laptops to their phones. Asus has used sharp-edged latest technology and has tried to lessen their prices till the maximum extent. The Zenfone 5Z, Asus' premium flagship, gave direct head-to-head -head competition to mammoths such as OnePlus and has also taken the first step in specializing in gaming phones under the ROG banner with the ROG phone. The recent highlight of Asus' claim to fame has been the entry of Zenfone Max Pro, launched for just 10,999 rupees with full packed features. Asus has at many events been promising towards the prospect of making India its biggest market and everyone is curious to know what comes next in this grand game of Asus. A lot of people terming, terming this as the comeback of the year. Within Asus, do you also look at it like that? I mean, you did have your products out there. They had a good momentum at one particular point of time. But then you took a, a, a kind of a, almost like a, you know, a sit back moment, got everything again, and you've come back with two big bang phones that done very well. Do you also term it as a comeback? Yes, Rajiv, certainly we term this as a comeback uh, for Asus in India. We've actually planned this comeback uh, very meticulously. Okay. Uh, we've really, you know, taken the approach of Made for India. As a tech company, we've been innovating a lot in the mobile phone space since 2014 when we got into the category. And there are many world firsts which we introduce globally. Okay. And we had this always cutting edge technology available, available with us. And what we wanted to do now is to transform this technological strength into products with the made for India philosophy, get products in the market which are really, really, uh, which would be really loved and appreciated by the Indian consumers and at price points which are well appreciated by the consumer. So see, they see a lot of value with ASUS comeback. One of the questions that obviously comes up is if this is a comeback, a comeback usually must be with a broad portfolio. Yes. So will we see you play in all price points? The current king of mid-range got unseated by you people. Is that, was that part of the plan? Did you, did you aim for the king? Did you want to you know, take a certain market share away from Xiaomi? Was all that part of the planning? See, Max Pro as a product uh, is clearly aimed to be the best in the segment and therefore, okay. you know, it had to be the best in the segment. Okay. <laughs> so it happened to be that, you know, you had a product out there from a particular brand uh, which was indeed very good and mm -hmm. we wanted to actually exceed that product in terms of delivery to the consumer and give a value proposition which is much, much better. Okay. And uh, certainly, therefore, you know, that was a part of the competitive strategy. Uh, going forward, uh, you know, we've also gone into another segment uh, which is, uh, you know, at the 30K price point where there is another king in the market. And again, we've, you know, delivered a product to the consumer which is much better and at a much stronger value proposition mm -hmm. as compared to the current king. Okay, okay let's talk about the product itself. Yes. So, if I was to restrict you, and because yes. that's the way consumers today look at sure. things, if I was to restrict you to say, your, your, your Zenfone Max Pro has be, be, become very successful, right? Three reasons why, three things in this phone, three features that you believe has made that happen. Sure. I think first of all, uh, you know, as a product, it gives you a very, very, very good processor in that particular segment. Okay. So you've got Snapdragon 636 Correct. at a starting pr price point of 10990, which is like really good processor at that particular price point. Second thing is again with the made for India approach, we took a major call that, you know, we don't want to stick only to Zen UI. But the consumer in this segment wants stock Android. We actually made that change and we've actually given a stock Android experience in this particular product. Then we built in other elements like a very, very good display, 5000 mAh battery. It's the only phone in this segment which packs in all, all this together with a 5000 mAh battery. Yeah. And again, a very good audio experience. And again, with the phone, you know, we created this accessory, okay, again, which is like passive amplifier, which is again a unique accessory which actually gives you 2x audio volume with good clarity uh, when you want to listen to audio with this product. Mm -hmm. So a lot of innovations uh, went into this to make this a very, very good mid-range product okay. for the consumer. So let's talk now about the Zenfone 5Z. So why at this price point? What is it that in the long term you were trying to gain out of this about from, from the Z? All that we needed to do was, again, follow the made for India approach, get the entire product right, 
from all aspects, get the pricing right, and deliver a great value package, uh, what we've also built up with Flipkart. Uh, and our, let's say, ecosystem partners like ICSA Bank, which give a fantastic offer today on any flagship which is available in the market. You spoke about partnerships, you spoke about how you've done with Flipkart, ICICI and others that have all been sure. you know, part and parcel. But I think one of the other ones that has been an interesting partnership seems to be Qualcomm. Qualcomm and our partnership runs very, very deep in the mobile industry. And uh, while with Zenfone 5Z you see Snapdragon 845 coming up with complete capability of AI. Mm -hmm. So while Snapdragon 845 had AI always, it was not utilized by others but we utilized it completely. So you're getting complete value out of Snapdragon 845 when you buy the Zenfone 5Z. Let's talk about the one that I was actually waiting for us to <laughs> come upon. Uh, you know, you call it the ROG phone, the rest of the industry and the media seems to love calling it the rogue phone. Okay. Is there a true market for it? And how do you think India will react to this phone? Because I hope it's coming to India. Yes. Yes, the ROG phone will be coming okay, to let, India. Let me interrupt you because sure. most people watching really would want to that. I'm repeating this again, the ROG phone is coming to India. Can we get a date now? Let's see. Uh, so date, I cannot confirm right now, but it'll be coming soon. Okay, we are making coming soon is always a good efforts, thing. Okay. Efforts towards that. Okay. Phone is custom designed, again, uh, with the gamer as the core target audience. So a lot of innovative capabilities, right from the processing speed to the fact that you, you have actually two charging slots available to even put it up horizontally. So that if you are playing a game for a very long period of time, it doesn't actually interrupt your charging. Your charger doesn't come in your way. To innovative stuff like air triggers coming into the play and uh, a range of accessories which are so cool and take care of your complete ecosystem. How do you think it's going to fare in India? Between you and Asus, are you very confident of that phone in India? Very much. Okay. Very much. So we look forward to with my final question which needs only a one sentence sure. answer. Do you believe you'll be playing in literally every price point and every price segment that exists in the market or are you going to leave some out? Uh, we would want to actually serve across all price segments uh, consumers with our products which are meaningful for that price segment.